This episode of MMA Notes is brought to you by Nectar Sleep, the most comfortable bed possible. Save 33% off and get free shipping with code MMA Nuts. Renew therapy. Earn your health benefits daily with a cold plunge. Save $200 off with code MMA Nuts 200. Newsist. Vegan nutrition products. Save 15% off with code FIT10. NordVPN. Get advanced security, internet freedom, and complete privacy. Save 73% off the two year plan plus four months free with code MMA Nuts. Defense soap. Everyday soaps for everybody. Use code MMA Nuts to save 15% off your order. Hey fans, this is MMA Nuts, episode 614. 614! My name's Ingo Wago. Matt Griff, MMA Show, by MMA fans, for MMA fans, walk the line between serious and ridiculous. What are you drinking over there? Crack Rocks? A little can. Coors Light. Oh, he's making it happen. Some high quality beers. beers. Yeah. That's like water. You know, yeah, I miss the days of drinking the watered down beer like the good old Keystone Light in college. Oh, god, which was I don't even remember. I think a, you get like a 30 pack for like eight bucks or something insane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, ours yeah. was uh Milwaukee's best. That was always like, or Bush mm. Light, or Bush Light. That was always a, a you know, you're right, like a 30 pack. It's everyone it scrounging it, looking under the seats for change. You're like, yep. all right, we, we got the eight dollars, let's do it. And then you go to like the the bar was called Otto's at uh Northern Illinois University, it was where all the bands would come in. And then I think they were serving like dollar 24 ounce paps blue ribbons, <laughs> like some real fucking white trash beer like fuck yeah and i think that's who sponsored the tough man contest i think it was pbr yeah yeah it's on there in the upper corner little paps blue ribbon that made a comeback that's like all all the rage with the hipster crowd now really yeah they love the paps pbr baby there you go well for in college it was always like what's the cheapest beer to drink and that's what we're gonna roll with we don't give a fuck and then one of our friends would always drink coors light and he always said it ain't bad beer. I'm like, okay, it's, Wayne, it's, <laughs> it's, it ain't it's bad not, beer. <laughs> it's not bad. You know, it's like it has decent taste and, you know, it's cold, refreshing. Guess who'll be sponsoring us next week? <laughs> Brought to you by Coors Light. That's right. Coors, thank for the beers. That's um, right. It ain't bad beer. It ain't bad. Well, we had no MMA, right? Over the weekends? No, no, no MMAs. I did see one interesting thing. So I'll talk a little technology and not Chicago sports to piss everybody off. But I was at the doctor's office the other day waiting in line. And there's a fucking lady. There's a iPad on wheels. You're, <laughs> You're like, damn a, right. Hey, like, hey, doc. <laughs> why, are, why are you doing this right now? This is an eye exam. No You're reason. Like, <laughs> like, hey, man, whatever goes, flows. You want to... I'm just trying to be like water, like Bruce Lee. All right. No, I'm waiting in line just to check in. And there's a Hispanic woman in front of me speaks no English, but they wheeled out this iPad on wheels with a human translator on it. So like the woman behind the counter is talking English to the translator on the fucking iPad connected wirelessly and he's translating in spanish i'm like i could have just fucking done this for everyone it's pretty basic you're just trying to set up an appointment but it was just one amazing to see that kind of technology being used like in a fucking cool way that should be but then two uh baffling to me that someone speaks zero english like i don't understand this world like how are you operating in this but i just was fascinated all the way around but Anyway, that was my technology update. People are doing shit, and it's not AI related. It was a human being. That's pretty crazy to think about. Well, that chat GPT or whatever that that stuff is like uh, <laughs> all the rage nowadays too. I feel like there's a there's a thing happening in the next couple of years. There's there major, is. major leaps in technology here where this kind of stuff you just saw is going to be prevalent everywhere. Yeah, you I know. just saw. Uh, I think it was Nvidia. I just saw a quick clip online where they were using AI in a video game. So I guess like the person was asking like the NPC, 
um, questions that he claimed were unscripted, which, you know, video game makers are notorious for fucking lying about shit. But it was, <laughs> they just gave the NPC like a background story. And then they were asking questions and it was answering and telling them shit of like how to start the next quest. Like it was fucking like, if true, insane, but it seems plausible with the way AI seems to be going. It's just, it's wild. Can we get some AI judges for fucking MMA? Maybe computer judging. Yeah. I wonder if they could, I bet you that would be possible possible you're gonna see this kind of shit in lots of places you know so that would be one hmm. we gotta do something it's the worst i think it's ever been <laughs> and it never gets better you know they everyone just talks about it oh judging sucks dick and no one does a fucking thing about it but i wonder if you can get ai to predict the outcome of a fight successfully what kind of success rate would ai have based on like the ability to go out and look at all the data points everywhere i like, bet you pretty fucking good because it can yeah. analyze everything super fast i was asking it some shit the other day and um just trying to i was asking it seo questions and it didn't like my questioning because it it was like trying to steer me a different way than i wanted to go with seo it's like oh. hmm Maybe you should consider this, sir. And it was also saying, I'm not connected to the internet, so I can't help you with that. And then like two days later, I got connected to the internet. So I asked the same question and it just fucking shut me down again with the what my questions. I'm like, what the hmm. fuck kind of game are you? And then I asked it, I'm like, hey, so who hosts the MMA Nuts MMA podcast? And then it fucking lied and made up like someone else and me. Like steve gibberish and matt griffith i'm like what the fuck are you talking about this is who's, pretty basic info who's steve <laughs> i don't know like i guess you've been replaced <laughs> damn it <laughs> what the fuck what the hell they don't even, like or maybe it's just gonna start generating podcasts on its own like, like steve steve from minecraft like that steve you know? i don't know who is the guy was there a guy in myspace no that's not steve is that dan i don't know i was I, never I, on it anyways but God, the world has gone mad. It's fucking technology. Technologies. So what else is going on as we slide into some MMAs? Uh, well, I want to start with this story because this is just absolutely ridiculous. So Ian Gary uh, is an up-and-coming welterweight in the UFC. And over the weekend, there was a uh, an event, Karate Combat 39, where, you know, some, mm. com some commotion. Did you see this? Thought you were going to say some coked up commotions. Some commotion. I'm I'm assuming we can share sound. I'll try not to blow out your eardrums. Hold on a second. Um, but so, so is that too loud or are you good? No, you're good. All right. So there's a little melee happening here after a little action. This guy's very excitable. He's throwing chairs. The guy's like, hey man, take it easy. That that's a big dude right there, right? Yeah, it looks like Frank Mir when he pumped up to fight Brock yeah, Lesnar. Exactly. So he's telling him to calm down. The crowd's going crazy. And here's, in a second, you're going to see Ian Gary here on the, on the left of the screen. Just a moment. Because I would like to know who the fuck brings a fucking baby <laughs> to, a, to an MMA fight. A fucking <laughs> psychopath his, fighter? He's got his baby. That's ridiculous. I've never seen anything like it. It's well, usually if they bring a baby to any kind of sporting event, they have some kind of hearing protection on the baby because sometimes that shit goes fucking loud as fuck, man. You don't want to yeah. be. Um, yeah, he's got places it? to be. Like that is baby's got to learn, or is that okay? Nah, he's got to learn early. Like we got to <laughs> fuck people up. This is what I do for a living. You got to learn now, motherfucker. We're in the shit. We're in the pit. Sometimes chairs and bottles fly. You got to be ready at all times. You know where the exits are. Do you know where the are. exits are, baby? Fucking learn. <laughs> Love it. This reminds me of like Michael Jackson. Remember when he was dangling the baby over the Fuck freaking yeah. bat? I'm like, what He's are you He's trying doing? to teach him the dangers <laughs> and like, you better danger. keep it on this side of the railing. But if you That's go over like, this side, it's sketchy. It's but I'm bad. sure the, the fans would have caught that baby if Michael dropped it, you know? Oh, he's all God. right oh man irresponsible well, yeah. sorry yeah it's true be responsible drink responsible um speaking of karate combat so that leads perfectly into uh i saw bass rootin he, he's one of the 
I don't know if he's a partner, but he's a, I think a commentator still. He's, he's somehow related with karate combat, but he was on the Joe Rogan experience. And he was saying that he had a, he's got a silicon nose now and it can't yeah. be broken. So he was actually like pushing it flat to his face because he got sick of it breaking all the time. He said, uh, I guess he was teaching kids back in the day and he was fixing his broken nose after one of the classes. And he has a, a plastic surgeon had like a couple kids in one of his classes and said he could fix it and fucking fixed it for free. I'm like, holy shit. I, and Joe had never heard of that either. Like, I didn't know that was a fucking option. You know, like that would be cool as shit because I wonder if that helps to deviate and septum too. If you just get the fucking silicon nose in and then you would never break it again. So you're always going to have good air flows. It's a fantastic. Are you thinking about doing this? No, never. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Like Fuck those doctors thing. and their surgeries. I did that deviated septum and those motherfuckers told me this is going to be like a cakewalk. You'll be in no pain. I was dying for two, two fucking weeks. I was on all the pain meds and it was like a four hour window. I'd fucking pass out for like a couple hours, wake up and be in pain, take another pain pill. And then it was just a cycle. And then I'm playing like call of duty fucking all day. Like, uh, 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 uh. and I come over, let's play rock band. I'm all gagged out of my mind back in the day. <laughs> It was the worst fucking thing. It was pretty bad. I remember, I think your wife had called me or, or someone and, and yeah. was like, is Matt okay? I'm like, I think so. We're playing Call of Duty. Like, I think it's, <laughs> I think, I think he's okay. It was <laughs> I'm not, the worst. I'm not, I'm not sure. Should I come over? She's like, I don't know. I, I don't want to go in the basement. I'm not sure what's, ha <laughs> what's happening down there. <laughs> ah, it all worked out. You were messed up, but that's for sure. Oh, you were, you were not for yourself sure. for like a, at least two weeks, maybe. No, nah, and then I ended, I had to be working from home and I'm making multi-million dollar purchases. <laughs> like, I should not be buying shit right now. Like, no. my boss is like, you're all right. I'm like, ah, I'm fucking fine. Let me work. I can do it from home. Yep uh yeah so that was going on what else is happening uh let's see um what else do we have uh alexander emilienko fighting uh making his mma return did you uh did you happen to see this um fight over the weekend because i'm yes. not really, i'm not really sure what i'm can we show this i hope we can yeah fucking show it uh, okay i say that now <laughs> i'm not really sure what the fuck's going on but so here he is with his opponent and you know his opponent's like sw swarming him with punches and then they're like okay fight's over the guy's like no no you good let's go let's let's keep it going all right we're gonna keep going because uh you know i got all the tattoos <laughs> so he takes so he takes him down and unfortunately he gets kimura quite quite hard handily here yeah pretty nasty um and then alexander wins so what <laughs> what what the hell did this, what just happened can the guy decide to keep fighting when the ref says no more like if they agree is it like a gentleman's agreement like we just keep going <laughs> I don't, I don't get well it. i wonder if this is the emilienko uh fix or what the hell is going on? It's a fan of Fabio Maldonado. It was the same thing in that fight where, like, I thought they stopped it. He kept going, and then somehow Fedor wins. Same thing here. Like, what the fuck? I don't know. Crazy to me. Yeah, I'm trying to process this. Yeah. Well, I think it's because you're in Russia, and you can make the rules up as you go. You just do whatever the fuck you want. Like, holy you shit. just keep on fighting whenever you yeah. want to. And then I saw Gordon Ryan made a post. I guess he got super ill and he's still kind of ill. So he said, hi, everyone. A quick update for everyone who has been asking. I'm not sure when I'll be competing again. When I got back from Abu Dhabi trip, I came down with a severe case of strep throat, which <laughs> ended with me in the hospital because my throat swelled shut. Yikes. Doctors also couldn't figure out how to cure it since no one ever fails penicillin for a strep infection. In all, I did seven days of amoxicillin, and within a day, my throat was back to square one. Then I did 10 days of penicillin. 
And within two days off, I was in the hospital with my throat sh swollen shut. In the hospital, they gave me a shot of penicillin and another 10 days of penicillin, which I failed. Then I switched to 14 days of clindamycin, which worked. So all in, I was on over 40 days of antibiotic straight plus a shot of penicillin. During this time, I was contagious and everyone uh, were in big camps. So I couldn't even go to training and fear I would infect them as well. In addition, my ears were in so much pain from my throat that I couldn't elevate my heart rate at all without having them want to explode and getting a pounding headache. So I've been completely inactive for a longer time than I have ever, uh, since I started training and <clears throat> as expected, my stomach has relapsed pretty bad. My nausea and lack of appetite have reappeared, so I'll need to deal with that. But first, I'm headed into surgery today for a tonsillectomy and to fix my severely deviated septum. Just wanted to update everyone on what my competition schedule looks like. I'm hoping to be back within the next few months. What Yikes. the fuck? Like, I heard a rumor that you get strep throat from eating ass. Was he eating some Abu Dhabi ass? <clears throat> Could be. I mean, it's bacteria, right? So, you know, it's a lot of bacteria down there. Yeah. You gotta, be, you gotta be careful what ass you're eating, you know, I guess. Yeah, I think I was on some podcast. I heard that. Maybe mm -hmm. I think the chick was eating that, not just ass. She was taking it right from the tap. Ew. Yeah. That's disgusting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Should probably just move right along. This is going yeah. south very fast. Good lord, what are you doing to us? This is bad. I don't know. I, I I'm uh well traveled in the podcast world. Uh-huh. I listen Appar to them. Apparently. My main source of knowledge. Uh, -huh. <laughs> uh what else is happening? Uh, well, bare knuckle FC is expanding to Europe um here shortly, and they're okay. holding tryouts in Bulgaria uh in June. And they're going to be trying to get some BKFC Europe going. So, and they have uh, hopes that they're going to be as successful there as they were in the U.S., you know. So I wanted to get your thoughts on this because uh, those street fights in Europe are a big deal. You know, you see that shit all over the Internet. I feel like this might take off, you know, if if, if done well. Yeah, and so. it seems like the perfect thing that I, I, I swear – who is it? Tyson Fury. I think he comes from a lineage of the, the street fighters, like the gypsies and bare knuckle shit. So that would seem to make sense, like overseas. I know fucking Connor sounds really serious about wanting to try it out. Yeah. He he might actually do well because he's got decent boxing skills. And if he doesn't have to deal with a leg kick on a fucking broken leg, it's probably fucking great for him. And he's got power as fuck a yep. lot of fucking power so i think it's a great idea i saw there was an update on the pfl founder said they had offered francis and ganu the same amount of money that the ufc did but the difference maker for ngano was the other things they could offer him was like the being P chairman of pfl africa and then the guaranteed opponent pay and whatever else was in his contract. So that's crazy because whatever the amount of money he was offered, didn't he say it was like seven digits? But they didn't disclose if that was like how many fights or whatever. Yep. And so everybody he fights gets like a two million or something. Yeah. 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 So. so good good for him. Like hopefully he'll fight sometime this year. <laughs> and he can just fight cans. There's nothing wrong with that. Like no, go make get that paid. Paper. Yeah, That's right. get paid. I like it. Uh, oh, here was a good one. So, Liam Healy sixteen on Twitter asked. He said, "Show me some no way that shit actually happened in MMA," and we'll pull up some things. So, because there's a couple things on here that I hadn't seen before. So, Kaposa on twitter posted this i'll turn the sound off so he said that time a fighter had his eye glued shut between rounds when event staff were hang on a second repairing a logo on the cage and super glue 
dripped on his head. He wiped it off thinking it was Vaseline and glued his eyelid closed. The fight was ruled a no contest. That's Chris Lobo at W-O-C-S 25. Wow. Like, that's, that's insane. <laughs> we had that one. And then I do remember this one. Here we go. This is close again. The case of the missing finger. I could do these all day. <laughs> like, I remember that one when a guy yeah. lost his finger. Like, holy shit. And then uh, we had posted one. It's the good old MMA fighter gets choked out and then shits his pants. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Classic. 2015, huh? Yeah. You know, kind of forward ahead here. You can see him locking it up. You guys out. Waiting, uh... waiting. And I get up, and then we start seeing drip, drip, uh, drip. Oh, no, I shit my pants. Oh, good Lord. Shit my pants. He's just dripping. Oh, everywhere. Jesus Christ. Yes, like I'm, out. Ah, I'm, not, I'm not touching that. Look at the, that. The amount of disinfecting. You probably need um, to do the UFC, like when they're on Fox, you disinfect, and then you got to repaint the canvas mm -hmm. just to make sure all the, the bad juju and strep throat juice goes away what else is going on out there well i kind of feel like we should talk a little sponsors what do you think no that's a great idea uh let's do a, a little a little barbell pearl hey we got a new sponsor barbell that's right they have in their annual memorial day sale it's back and for a limited time, you can get any athletic fit jeans, chinos, or anything pants for just $99. So I've had some of these pants in the past. They sent me a few more pairs, and I have them on now. I would stand, but you can't see anything but <laughs> my business. <laughs> I'll just tell you this. Just, so, just We'll take your word for it. Just got my yeah. barbell shirt on. Nice. But <clears throat> So I put these pants on. I'm like, oh, man. They are very flexible. And I always had a problem back in the day trying to pick pants or buy pants because if you work out, your thighs get so big that you put jeans on like normal pairs of jeans and you, they're so tight like in the thighs. But even if you don't work out, these are super flexible. They, they stretch immensely, but they still fit awesome. Like I have them on now and they almost like it is it feels like denim, but they're, they're so stretchy. It's almost like sweatpants. And, and then I, I went over to my wife. I'm like, hang on, look, check these out. I'm throwing fucking high kicks at her. <laughs> She's <laughs> like, what are you mental? Like, stop it. I'm like, no, you can't rip these. Like I gotta be firing off kicks. This is to yeah. show you, but they're, they are awesome. So you should check I, them out. I agree a hundred percent, you know, and their other stuff's great too. Shirts, um, super soft. I'm wearing one under here. Hats. Fantastic stuff. And even better, they're offering up to 40% off any overstock items. They sell out every year, so be sure to grab yours before they're gone. Barbell Apparel backs up their clothing with a no-questions-asked 365-day guarantee. If anything happens to your clothing, they'll help you repair or replace it so you can get back after whatever training, adventure, or mission your daily life demands. Go to barbellapparel.com slash nuts to save today that's right barbellpearl.com slash jumping me nuts funny anecdote the the word apparel is one of those words like where i know matt i always misspell it it's one of those words like i you know like mm. i i just don't know why I, i'm like one p two p's so that i'll do one p and two r's and i'm like fuck that's wrong what's the right way to spell it so good for them the so, same i never feel comfortable spelling it so it's a p p a r e l Yes. word that's right um what else and i'm gonna put my hat on so i can see you better this episode is sponsored by ridge wallet it's a gifting for dads can be hard so here's an easy thing to gift for your dad and he'll love it it's the ridge wallet again 
like I say, one of my favorite things about it, super dear, here you go, durable and thin. I'm going to smash it on my head, maybe. Can you hear that? I hear it. Perfect. Solid, just like my brain. Cash, cards, mm -hmm. thin. Holds, yeah, holds up to 12 Delicious. cards. Plus room for cash, over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. The wallets have over 50,000 five-star reviews. The durable material means each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. The Ridge team is so confident that you'll like it. They'll let you test drive it for 99 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. That's right. And Ridge is making gifting easy with one of their biggest mm -hmm. sales of the year for Father's Day. Go to ridge.com slash MMA nuts to get the best deal possible. That's ridge.com slash MMA nuts. And back to the show. Back to the show. So while well, there was no MMA, there was uh, Jake Paul's most valuable prospects card. Hmm. Which was, did you hear about this? No. Um, were they company. valuable and were they prospects? Well, here's the thing. Um, so there were a couple of guys fighting, and I'll, I'll let you be the judge of this because one of the guys looks like he may have boxed before. The other guy looks like he may not have boxed. They pulled before. him out of the crowd. <laughs> so <laughs> I just wanted to get your take on here they go. So oh Jesus. <laughs> can you tell which guy has boxed windmill? <laughs> windmill attack. <laughs> and, He's Here's coming right for you. Here's the thing. So at, at one point, Mr. Blue Strunks starts realizing that things are going very poorly for him, right? So I'm not sure this, this God, type of boxing. Um, it gets better. So, you know, he's still doing okay. Gio over here in the black trunks is not really connecting yet. Lewis, he's not right? trying yet. Yeah. And then he starts connecting a little bit. And uh, <clears throat> there he goes. He got him with that right. And then got him again. And Mr. Carlos Ray Ramirez at one point actually starts crying in the middle of he's just like he looks like he's crying. Yeah. No, I'm done. Well, he oh, probably hasn't God. been in a fight before. So and I, things go squirrely when you get punched. I'm wondering like who the hell sanctioned this? This is my question. This seems like this is gross negligence. Well, that one that's boxing, so it's not surprising, but you look that looked to me like a guy with 20 plus fights versus a guy that had zero fights that had no concept of how to throw a punch how to stand what to do how to even respond to being punched for the first time and his response was to cry totally natural i'm so mad i'm so sad you know probably get hard too you know and shit your pants yeah <laughs> shit your pants on the way out <sighs> Oh, wow. Well, it's not surprising. I don't know if that was the same league that put those two 400 pounders up, but would not surprise me. I'm not surprised. No. Motherfuckers. Uh, what else? Dana White working with Adam Sandler to develop a UFC comedy centered around working at the UFC. I guess that's happening. Cool. Sounds interesting. Uh, I'd like to see something. And then Mark Coleman has signed up. I think we talked about this a few weeks ago to do a celebrity boxing match. So the stats on Mark, according to Ryan Thomas MMA on Twitter, Mark is 58 right now. He last fought 13 years ago. He's had multiple hip surgeries and a heart attack since. Uh, here's what Mark looks shadow boxing right now. Hang on. I guess I could do a little bit of volume. Whoa, almost blew out a knee. This is sad. I mean, so what's your thoughts on that? I mean, it looks like he's in shape again, thankfully, a little bit, especially better than what you were showing me like a few weeks ago. <laughs> But I don't know about this, like the hip thing. Like, I don't know. It's uh, he's just it makes me sad that he has to do this. Can he do other things? You know, well, that's the thing. I don't know what the career path is for a lot of the fighters once they get done with fighting. If they haven't set that shit up, like, what do you do? 
I mean, at least he looks better than Ronda Rousey. I'll give him that. Like shadow boxing. And he was supposed to do a slap fight against Tim Sylvia. I don't know. It, it's it's unfortunate. And it's just, you, there's got to be some kind of retirement plan for these guys that have been in the sport. I don't know what that is. Like some kind of a fucking pension so they don't have to do this. 58, like where do you draw the fucking line? Uh, I don't know. I think he's past the line though. Yeah, it, it's him and like Bigfoot Silva with uh, 8,000 knockouts under his belt. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Let's move right along. I don't want to talk about that. It makes me upset. I want to be happy. Uh, okay, well, Silly. I'll make I'll make you happy. Here we go. Um, okay. I got I found a little action for you from yeah, Miami. Like- a little action, my new favorite sport. Are you ready? Here we go. Oh, thank you. A, a little and a one. <laughs> and a two. She's going on and three. And a bam. Nice. I feel uh-huh. like she would she should have thrown like an uppercut with that. And she's like, okay, is that what we're doing? Uh, all right. He's like, simmer down now, baby. Let's bend yeah. it over. Bend it on over. See, and I think this is a sport I can get behind. Absolutely. I, I mean... She doesn't even. Damn, know. <laughs> that one ain't playing games. No, fucking so, a man. I I like it. I think there should be more of it. I feel like this should be the ring car girls in the UFC in between rounds. We should have some kind of some weird like you know. You know. Well, I feel like the the UFC missed out on slap fighting and they invested in the wrong sport. Like that's the sport, especially if you're in Vegas. It seems like you would have a ton of those ladies around. Like you get off of work at the name, any fucking bar out there, the Palm. I don't know what, what casinos are still around treasure Island. Where are the classy ladies? Paris, the MGM, wherever. Uh Bellagio. Yeah. You can work a shift and then you come over for a little slap fight to finish it off. Or they could just do that in the casinos. Maybe that's something to add a little flavor during the shift it's time to slap fight ladies i like it we have it in the elevator glass elevators these slap fights going up and going down okay okay i can get behind that televise that i I like it you have betting on them they have sports books right there you could have a fucking cage in the sports book like they like the mgm used to have lions in the fucking casino have them just all the time constant slap fight 24 (laughs) 7 I like just it. keep rotating them in and out all day, all day. Yeah, all right. Absolutely. All day all night. Do it. Uh let's see. Uh, I don't want to show you this uh, Conor McGregor shot. Uh oh. This is why I want to be Conor McGregor. Not for the the money, the fame, the drugs, the craziness, but just so I can work out on my yacht in my underwear. I mean, sailing I, I, ocean I, blue. I, I, he's like a fucking pirate, Ingo. I, I he's, you know, he's the yacht yeah, is so big. He has a plant on it. I mean, come on, it's ridiculous. But yeah, I can get. <laughs> I, I like. It. He's doing work. He's training hard for Michael Chandler. You can see. I'm just wearing my underwear, making making shit happen. Uh, what else is happening? Uh, I just have some knowledge at this point. Okay. I got a handful of other things. So someone had interviewed Rampage Jackson. He was talking about his tough incident with the door. Oh, geez. (laughs) He was saying, oh, that door did not deserve that. So I was trying to leave because they cheated one of my fighters, and I didn't like the way they were treating my team. So I was trying to leave the gym, and as soon as I threw that water, I was like, let me get off camera because I don't know what I'm going to do if I lose my temper. And I don't know what I'm going to say. I'm probably going to hurt somebody. So I think the new season of Tough is starting like this week. Tuesday, yeah. Yep. So I'm going to I'm gonna play this clip and hopefully they don't fucking uh, gank us on this one. But here we go. I may have to cut the show. Just disgusted. Because you got to get that. This is my favorite Rampage Jackson moment. That door is so... It's like a false hollywood door yeah and that's that 
And then Dana White was going on uh, saying, well, I guess we're going to need some better doors around here. <laughs> He's like, that sucks. It shows how shitty these doors are. Uh, cheap. I'm like, yeah, you never expect the door to be fucking almost cardboard. It, it's it almost like, like it a two like cardboard. Yeah. sheets of like some very thin wood veneer on the outside and then cardboard in the middle. Mm. I'm like, holy fuck. I, that's when it was super fun when you have people like Rampage just going off and mm-hmm. how Rampage, what was he doing? You said he was running, but not running, preparing for his fights. He's and... Talking about how he's got the Mike Dolce and he's doing all this training and they show him running and he's basically like jogging and it looked like he had just started a block prior. <laughs> he's like, I've run six miles. I'm like, you don't look like you run six. You should be sweaty. Like yeah. there's no, there's no, there's no you chance. run for the camera. You jog for the camera and then you talk six miles. Like <clears throat> yeah. Fun stuff. An- another new sport. It's called uh Bader ball or batter ball. I'm not quite sure. I'm from Kaposa. Okay. This. Oh, geez. But it's basically like, again, you're playing basketball. It looks like a little three on three uh-huh. and a round octagon. And I think once you get the ball, yeah, like this guy gets suplexed, but he makes the pass, makes the play. They shoot, they score. So you get a little replay on this. So see the pass and the suplex. It's a beautiful pass, actually. Yeah. And they're actually making baskets. It's not like that other one we saw where the guys just seem to be grapple fucking each other and it's like whipping the ball. And if it goes in, great. If it doesn't, whatever. This is the evolution of that. The sport is evolving. Yeah. Breakneck speed. This is, I think it's AI. <laughs> it's getting involved in everything. Yes. Do a little tweak of the week. Yes. So this one, this one's interesting. So this is uh, a fight. It doesn't say where. We'll do this a little good old flying punch to the ball sack. Oh. <laughs> the guy goes for a flying knee. Unfortunately, the punch was aimed for his head, and his balls just happened to be there at the time. Ouch. Yeah. Unfortunate that's a shame. timing. Right? <laughs> that's a shame. So we got that one. And then we have, oof, this one's tough. <clears throat> I don't know. I find this one hard to believe, but. Here we go. A woman getting ready to do some boxing with two 45 pound plates. Oh, damn. The, the sound is correct. Ah. Oh, she got it twice. That's oh, just she got it coming and going. Ow. Yeah. And then uh, let's get this one for the road. A little Hezbollah, the devil, man. He's still out there. Making things happen. Oh, He's got a psychopath laugh. He does. He's like Chucky. He's frightening me. I don't like it. And uh, super creepy. Yeah. Right into knowledge. What do you got? All right. So I found this cool Instagram uh, post, couple posts actually, about famous uh, people. Mm-hmm. reimagined as guitarists so here cool. we have oh, i want to get your vote on this who you think is who you think looks the coolest here we have tom hanks uh he looks like a bruce springsteen a little tom cruise looks like a bruce springsteen <laughs> okay barack obama uh, i don't know he looks like uh like he's in the band kiss for some reason <laughs> uh, he's very happy Paul we have, Stanley. i think this is marilyn monroe um boring but hot uh gordon ramsey yeah i like him he Uh, he reminds me like a like a motorhead he's in the band motorhead i I was gonna say like sting but okay i can see sting too yeah uh freaking donald trump (laughs) jesus christ another (laughs) motorhead to me Uh, our judas priest there's morgan freeman uh what the hell is ice q ice t's band when he was doing metal that's what he's in a uh, body count yeah uh, that's it kkk bitch oprah winfrey <laughs> jesus <laughs> christ like uh, rage against the machine leo dicaprio yeah and, and then I'll danzig jump i'll jump over here's uh harrison ford yes um 
Arnold. <laughs> it looks very angry. It the actually looks, looks like it could actually be Arnold. With the yes. And stuff, right? Celine Dion. It looks like Lita Ford. It's really strange. Uh, Freaking Jean. That Picard. looks like Judas Priest for sure. Right <laughs> and then uh, Bernie Sanders. Bernie, yeah. Um, what's his Brad face? Pitt. Brad Pitt. Yep. Abraham Lincoln. Nice. Uh, who's this guy? Ted oh, Cruz. That's it. Okay. More Morgan Freeman. Samuel or, uh, Jackson. Sorry, Samuel Jackson, not Morgan Freeman. And yep. then the Justin president. Trudeau. Yeah, the Canadian president. So, do you have a favorite? Who do you, who do you like? Oh, uh, I probably like the Gordon Ramsay and the Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, those. Are, I I think the the Arnold was my favorite for sure. Yeah, he looked Look very legit. authentic. Yep. Yep. So. I got a couple of canologists for you. Little shirts that go hard. Here we go. I'm it's ready. Like, I'm no chef, but boy, are these titties sweaty today. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and then this one seems to fit the theme of the show. I saw this video making the rounds. So uh, they add a little flavor to your salad. Oh, baby. <laughs> what the? It's a Gordon Ryan special right there. Uh, That's mean, how you get strep throats. Uh-huh. Catching that ass and then uh, tossing yep. that salad. Fantastic. That's what they say. Well, I suppose that's the end, eh? Probably should be. <laughs> Roll out. Well, that has been another edition of MMA Nuts. My name's Ingo Weigel. I'm back with Thanks for playing. See you guys next time. Word. Word.